So we we'll step on in here. First, this is into the utility room, and uh, this is the heat recovery ventilation system here. You just want to step on and get a wee look at it. Um, a lot of people put them in the roof space. We didn't like to because it's easier to watch. There's a, there's a wee clock on it here. You have your three settings. It sits in the middle setting. Uh, and if, if it's very hot, you can turn it up to the three. If it's very cold weather, you can turn it down to the one. The one, And this tells you um, it's on setting two. And that's 140 cubic metres an hour of air change. This is the two filters are inside. Your two filters are easy changed accessed, and it leaves it very easy to work with. You have extract on all the wet rooms. She extracts air at all times, and she brings it to this machine. The air coming underground comes up into this machine. The fresh air, and. Uh, she uses the, the, the stale air she takes out to heat the fresh air coming in mm -hmm. and she harvests approximately 90% of the, the heat that she, she takes out of the house. So you, you have very little heat loss altogether. In here, just basic utility room except the tumble dryer is a condensing tumble dryer. There is no extract out of it. So any heat that that tumble dryer produces is back into the house and recycled into your um, heat system. Yeah. So er, anything you make heat, even us standing here, there's heat coming off us. We will be harvesting the heat yeah. the, the, off what you're all doing. Any generator, yeah. Anything that generates heat at all. Uh, as far as we, we, we don't have that, that's we, that's our one radiator there. We have two heated towel rails, and that's our, the the. The, the, that's all the heating we have throughout the house. Everything else is transported through the heat recovery ventilation system. To leave it a, a little easier to work, because we're all the extract in this end of the house and the, the supplies in the other end are mainly, we brought a pipe through and it comes through here from the front hall here to the back hall. So to leave us, a, a, we don't build up pressure. The same, these are the air flows. It, comes, uh, it lets it work better for us. Uh, this is just a wee downstairs toilet, uh, this is uh, disabled, uh, all our appliances are all up off the ground so the, the floors are clean at all times and again see this flushes with the uh, water harvest. Uh, take you all in. Doors, external doors, composite doors, U value of 0 0.64 this is into the kitchen, living area, uh, dining area, and this is the proprietor of the house herself. <laughs> Again, in the kitchen, our extract fan is only a filter. It doesn't extract the air out, because we can't extract the air out of an airtight house. This is the extraction system going back. When uh, Violet cooks, th th this filters it. So we're not taking greasy air back to the heat recovery ventilation system. Therefore, um, we use the heat from the cooker to heat the house. And then this is a supply one here. So there's a constant flow of air throughout here. Here we have our only form of heating. Violet had it on about an hour or so last night. So. That's the main heat source if it's cold. Now we did run there at the tail end of the summer for seven weeks without anything heating. There was enough coming off the solar panels and that there solar again throughout the building. Um, she just leaves it set. So if she feels that she needs maybe we drop a hot water. Hot water is the, the biggest uh, demand here. So light it then just as it's required. So, I'm uh, into the hall, again we're into the, the main bathroom here and again everything's off the ground, the level deck shower and the ventilation system that extracts for the heat. We have a towel rail in the bathroom. Now whenever 
whenever that would heat through the stove, the heat of that there is extracted up through this, or a shower, the heat of the steam of the shower extracted, and again goes back to the heat recovery, and that heat is then distributed throughout the rest of the, the house. You've allowed space here for a stair. With a loudspace with attic trusses here, I just to leave the house uh, could be used, you know, if, if decided to put uh, roof space conversion in it. The space here, four stairs, there's attic trusses on it, and doubled up at the top uh, to facilitate the stairs. Um, it, as we built, we weren't too sure what we were doing. So, uh, you know, as I want to say a word to show, we weren't too sure what we needed in heat. So we left pipes and the walls behind each door for radiators but then we didn't require them so if we needed a radiator we could lift off the skirting and set the radiator on quite simply. Um, I don't think there's really anything else and here again is a supply room triple based window with a U value of 0.8 the walls do look deeper than the usual house? The, the, yes, they certainly are, they're deeper. Funny, the lady came in to visit here and the first thing she said, Oh, she says, I love your white window sills. <laughs> and that was her first thing. But yes, there is about, um, oh, three, about 350 millimetres of insulation in the walls. There's uh, That's of uh, crown wool. There is... Um, 650 millimetres of crown wool in the ceilings and it's in two layers with the airtight membrane between it as is the walls. The floor has uh, 175 mil of polyurethane insulation and onto the cement in it. So it's quite well insulated and I think from what we're told through the Passive House Academy that is optimum. Any more is really wasting money. Uh, any less just isn't good enough. Yeah. So, but not just that yeah. Have you ever used a thermal imaging camera on this house? We did, yes. What results did you get? I can't find a fault on it at all. Excellent. <laughs> the only fault he could find was the, the threshold onto the doors. Right. And all of that there. He, the first place he came in was here at the, at the ceiling, yeah. uh, wall to ceiling joint. There wasn't a change in at all. He can get a little round each opening. I get a slight change of colour around the openings. If I had to do it again, we have too many openings in the windows. We didn't require as many openings. But we'll learn. Yes. This hasn't been the prototype. I'm going to step on now. Just one, two. This is, um, this is all low energy lighting throughout. I think Raymond thinks that uh, we're using about two kilowatts of electric a day, two units of electric a day from his calculations so not too sure. Again this is a bedroom and we have our supply air there. We have a slight extract in the, the, the built in wardrobe just to keep it fresh and the main uh, air will go out through the door and the same then when we go to the master bedroom uh, the master bedroom walks out through the en suite Sorry, John. The master bedroom. The ensuite is out through the dressing room. So the supply air is there, the extract is here. So there's a constant movement of air. So you'll find that it's always fresh, the house is always fresh. Um, and again, it's just basically the same as the bathroom, everything's level and easy to operate. So I'll take you on up and show you the, um, the hot press here. This is, um, this, this is the hot press now, and there this morning your solar panels are sitting at 35 degrees. Um, and the bottom of the tank is 29 degrees, the top of the tank is 32 degrees. So it'll give you a wee idea so you can monitor all the time what's happening. This is all to do with the solar panels. They go into the bottom of the cylinder. And when they reach a temperature of about 50, what's that said? It's about 53 degrees. The solar panels, if they heat this to more than 53 degrees, the pump comes on 
and pumps it to those radiators mm -hmm. to, to, to get rid of the heat as opposed to the panels going into stagnation. And then we have also plumbed in our uh, boiler here, our wood burning stove. It is plumbed here in a fashion that it's a conventional system through a, a header tank. So it actually works gravity all the time. We can't, because it's an uncontrolled heat, heat system, we cannot uh, use, uh, we cannot depend on electric. If electric went off, uh, we would have a problem. Mm -hmm. So it works itself in gravity and it works into the cylinder. We have also a spare port in the cylinder for oil. We had plumb for oil for into the utility room, but the smallest oil boiler we could get was ten times bigger than what we needed. So unless it's in years to come there's a smaller boiler made, I can't envisage it being required. This tank is it was known as a maxi pod or a mains flow cylinder. When you turn on a hot tap, the water the, the, the mains water goes into the bottom of the cylinder and round a coil and heats on its way up through and then you automatically you're getting the hot water out of the top of it. Now because it's mains hot water you could drink it. You can fill the kettle with it. So that's really the, the cylinder um, and that's the way it works as you see. It means you can clean your teeth with the hot water. It's positioned in the centre of the building as much as possible. That's to one shower and that's to another shower. So there's no run of hot water. Well, you, you know, you, you not have to leave it running for a long time in order to get hot water. Um, basically, that's it. Is there anything else, Fiona? The air tightness. Air tightness. Yes, air tightness was difficult, but air tightness. Um, when you get to the stage, you realise just how important it is. Um, the air tightness we have for the passive house is point five one. The air tightness through building regulations is about 0.33. It's, they're two different tests. One works in comparison with the surface area of the building. The passive house works with the cubic meters volume of air in the house. Um, now, when we say air tight, the reason it has to be so air tight is if you have a room that supplies air. And it can build up a little pressure in that room if the door was closed. If you have an air leakage, she's pushing hot air out of your building. The same if you're in an area where the, the sub, or extract, and she's extracting, and you have an air leak, she's extracting cold air. And that cold air extracts straight up into your system, and then it cools the complete building. So it's important. That, that's why air tightness is so important. And really is very important. Uh, Does it strain the mechanical ventilation system? Not really, no. It wouldn't. She, she works very, very slowly. She's very, very easy. Uh, she, she's only using about 45 pounds of electric a, a year. You know, so she's not hard to run uh, as far as that goes. But it's just because she's large ducts, it's easier for her to, to manoeuvre air. You've quite a large array of PV panels attached to this house too? Yes, they're down on the, the, the milking parlour roof. Uh, with six and a half kilowatts of PV panels. Uh, and quite honest to the house, you have very, very little of the electric mm -hmm. produced. Which is, um, because everything's low energy, A-rated appliances, there's nothing really to, to use it. But the six and a half kilowatts, and at the minute they seem to be working exceptionally well. Um, I think it was £198 she got back there for them. If we had used all that, it was worth another £350-odd. Pounds. And then there'll still be the, 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 the payoff, you know, for what the rocks payment yeah. Yeah. for what we've... That, that still has to come. That comes out annually. And this house is free of rates at the minute? It's free of rates for five years, being a zero carbon house. And... Um, that's a potential saving of another £5,000. It would be a potential saving of another £5,000. Would you offset against the cost yeah. of the vacuated tube and the EVs? Yeah. And yes. Well, the vacuated tubes would pay for themselves. Yeah. They, they really would. They're a lot more successful when they're facing the right way yeah. and plumbed in correctly. They, they do pay for themselves. They're yeah. very, very good. 
um, it would take a little longer certainly for the electric but um, they will as well especially as you see when you take in all our incentives yeah. your rate relief and your wee bit of grant yeah. and, and what you would get on it and which uh, chose to put those in as opposed to an oil boiler yeah. so I said right we'll go this way mm -hmm. and uh, what we've estimated is by the time the house has to pay rates the PV panels will be paid for. Yeah. Excellent. So. Well, I just I know, I know you're pushed for time, but you're involved in the build of, of the property. What was the biggest challenge in the build to maintain? Probably the keeping everybody the here. I used to oh, yeah. probably keeping everybody on board into what you were doing because nobody knew what you were doing, and they found a lot of the things that you were being very pernickety about. They didn't. They thought that, that was you were too fussy. So selling the philosophy to everybody on, on site That's was the, the biggest, biggest thing. Challenge. But when they see it now working, they can understand it. Yeah, that's good. Thanks very much. Thank you.